All right, nine millimeter PPU, 147 grain defense line. I'm gonna do a test again. I've got a fresh block straight out of the cooler, my narrow, shorter block here. And we're gonna do some speed tests too, or check the speed on it too. <clears throat> All right, here are those 147 grain PPU 9 millimeters. This is the 3.1 inch. You can see the wound track in there pretty good through the first 11 inches. Here's the 3.7 inch. Again, I tried to hit them so you could see the wound track, so I tried to hit them a little high. And uh, again, it's in there. They both appear to have gone into the second block. And we'll uh, find them in the second block here. Okay, there is the second round I took. That was out of the 3.7 inch. Leading edge on that is at right about 14 and a half inches. And I'll go ahead and I'll dig that guy out here quick. There you go. Kind of mangled uh, the case there a little bit, but we did have some expansion. And the other one, you can see, got down in there to about 17 inches. That was from the from the LC9S. I'll go ahead and I'll dig that guy out. There we go. There's that one. So we had expansion on both of them for a budget round heavy budget round too so again here was from the lc9s here was from the uh from the p365 xl all right welcome back from the range as you saw we did a nine millimeter short barrel test of the ppu uh defense line 147 grain nine millimeter uh, it performed actually pretty well, I thought. Um, as you can see, this was the round from the 3.1 inch barrel. I do apologize. I'm still getting used to the chrono, so I did not track the speeds from the 3.1 inch barrel. I did track them from the 3.7. So I do have the speeds and the energy computation from the 3.7 inch barrel, but not the 3.1. So again, I apologize for that. I'm trying to get better at, at, at using that chrono. But that was from the 3.1, so we had some expansion. Um, and from the 3.1 it made it to 17 inches in the gel, which is pretty good. From the 3.7 inch barrel, as you can see, the, uh, the, uh, copper jacket here, um, just sort of started to tear off, which made this really wicked wing on there, which was pretty devastating. Um, and that made it to 14 and a half inches in the gel. So we'll go ahead and weigh them up, and as I weigh them up here, we'll throw up the, uh, throw up the uh, the high measurements on those and uh, we'll go from there but yeah as overall a uh, pretty impressive round here we'll get this back to grains here so from the 3.1 inch um, again no no real weight loss on that so the expansion from the 3.1 inch was 0.47 inches 0.47 inches and 0.51 inches and we'll weigh up here the 3.7 inch shot. Uh, again, no weight loss. The jacket did hold on to that. Expansion was 0 0.43, 0 0.45, and 0 0.70 where that big wing was. Um, so yeah, overall, uh, pretty good. The energy on this one, this was the 3.7. Again, um, we took two shots we were able to measure, 959, at 973 for an average of 966 which is 305 foot-pounds of energy um, also found another interesting uh, computation that you can use regarding energy transfer and it's called the bullet impact force and again so uh, in that it's it's the the energy but how quickly it's transferred so it the, the shorter the penetration the more uh, energy is, is transferred the higher that number is going to be and this one is 1119 newtons um, was how that one computed out and then I guess I can provide that for some other uh, um, uh, 
similar rounds as well in the future. But, um, again, pretty good performance. Here's this one against, this is what the uh, um, Hornady American Custom did at 147 grain. And then here was the 147 grain HST round. So, again, I think I'd rather have an HST with these PPUs for their price point. Um, pretty good. Pretty good. They're one of the cheapest uh, hollow points I can find right now. And you can find them for, I think, even uh, under $20 a box of 50 So, uh, there we go. Um, uh, comment down below. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, stay tuned for the next one.